Amy admits Matt and Karen will affect her until the day she dies. Hello dear lovely viewers, welcome to Blast Gossip with Jesse. I hope your day is so well. Amy and Matt Roloff had tied the knot in 1987. Then, in the early 2000s, they began showcasing their family on the farm on Little People Big World. Little did they know that the LPB Big couple would call it quits by 2017 and be with separate partners. In recent years, the show has documented Matt with Karen and Amy with Chris. While it's been many years since their divorce, things still remain awkward. Matt and Amy often have to hang out with one another despite being exes to film the show. Many would say they should be normal about it by now. But that's not the case. In fact, Amy took to her confessional in the recent episode to say that the awkwardness between them all continues to exist. Moreover, she was sure that it wouldn't ever fade away. Why did Amy say so? Amy Roloff has come a long way since the time she debuted on LPBA. She got a divorce from Matt and also found Chris Merrick. Together they are very happy. But the star still feels awkward working with her ex Matt and his partner Karen. In a new epiosti, she explained how working with the latter was awkward. She explained how her and Matt's situation will affect her until the day she dies. Matt mentioned how he and Karen let Amy be in charge of a silent auction at the farm. They were all working together for a fundraiser with the DAA, or Dwarf Athletic Association of America. Hence, things had been quite busy and hectic. Matt mentioned how Karen and Amy had different working styles. The former was very list-oriented, while his ex functioned in a haphazard manner Roloff admitted that he and his fiancée were playing the supporting role while Amy was mostly doing the work for the event. The latter also expressed how they were all working together. She expected Matt and Karen to bring in more items than she had expected, but she was happy about them bringing in people too. Amy said her LPB to X was also getting a whole barn ready for the fundraiser. Roloff admitted that he and his fiancée were playing a supporting role while Amy was mostly doing the work for the event. The latter also expressed how they were all working together. She expected Matt and Karen to bring in more items than she had expected, but she was happy about them bringing in people too. Amy said her LPB to X was also getting a whole barn ready for the fundraiser. It finally happened, everyone in the LPB to fanbase was curious about how Amy would react to Matt and Karen's engagement. Well, the previous episode finally showcased it. It had the star immediately as her ex's future wife. Let's see the ring. The camera showed Matt holding his breath and saying, uh-oh. But, after observing the ring for a while, Amy happily said it was very pretty and made a hilarious comment. She asked Karen how the second half of life is always better. The latter also smiled wide at the joke. The former said that she was okay despite Matt being her ex, as long as they didn't get nitty-gritty and personal. Do you think Amy will act out later when it comes to Matt and Karen? Or will their event go smoothly? Tell us in the comments below. LP Boo's Chris Marek warns Amy Roloff about the engagement ring Matt Roloff bought Karen Chandler Little People. Big World star Chris Merrick worried how his wife, Amy Roloff, would react to the engagement ring her ex-husband, Matt Roloff, bought for Karen Chandler. After Matt, 62, and Karen, 56, discussed the proposal during the March 12 episode, Chris, 61, warned Amy, 61, that Karen's diamond ring was bigger than hers in a teaser clip for the Tuesday, March 19, episode shared by Parade. I'm not sure why Chris really wanted to prepare me that the ring that I will see on Karen's finger, you know, oh, the diamond's going to be bigger. Amy said in a confessional. I'm like, oh, how much bigger? She noted that her husband made it sound like the diamond covers her whole hand or something, adding that she personally doesn't get into all that stuff. The clip also caught up with Matt and Karen as they made their way to Amy and Chris home for a meal. I think it's going to be fine, he told producers about seeing Amy, who was married to from 1987 until 2016, for the first time since his engagement. She sounded great on the phone when I talked and we texted and stuff, but you know they actually, you know, see her. He continued, I don't know if she's that she's going to make things awkward or she's oak with it, but we're going to find out here in a few minutes. Once the newly engaged couple arrived at the house, Amy quickly brought up the topic by asking Karen to see her ring. Uh-oh, oh boy, Matt said at the end of the clip, which concluded before Amy could share her reaction. Matt and Karen announced their engagement in April 2023. 
After six wonderful years together, I asked Karen to marry me, and she said yes. Matt told people at the time, Our plan is to enjoy our engagement, and we are looking forward to a simple but elegant wedding in 2024. They continued to gush about the special proposal during the March 12 episode of the TLC show. I asked Karen to marry me, and she said yes. Matt explained in a confessional, while Karen added, You said to me, I've thought about this a lot for a long time and I want to grow old with you. That's what he said, and then I started to cry. Karen said she had no idea that Matt was planning to propose, while she was also surprised that her parents and close friends were in on the surprise. Matt added that he told a tight circle about the proposal, noting that the closest people in Karen's life managed not to drop any hints about his plans. We're in our backyard in Arizona, like our favorite spot, Karen recalled while sharing more specific details about when Matt popped the question. The sun had set so the ambience was just really cozy vibes and nice. Karen explained she was so shocked when Matt asked for her hand in marriage. And then we took the minute. We just sat for a few minutes and just chatted and I was very excited and I cried. And he's like, don't you want to go in the light and look at it? And I'm like, no, I just want to sit here for a minute and absorb this moment. Because it just felt right. It felt natural. The reality star continued. It felt like it was always meant to be. Hollywood royalties got to eat. Actor Gene Hackman was seen out on a dinner date in New Mexico on Thursday, using a cane to walk and holding the arm of his wife, Betsy Arakawa. The couple dined at Papadou's Seafood Kitchen in Santa Fe, where the legendary actor has lived since the 1980s. Earlier in the day Hackman, who turned 94 in January, was spotted grabbing a cup of coffee and apple pie from a local Speedway store. Ever the outdoorsman, he sported hiking pants, a checkered shirt, gray vest, a cap and shades. Although the unforgiven actor and Arakawa, a 62-year-old pianist, got married in 1991, they're rarely seen together in public. The pair was last photographed 21 years ago in a much more glamorous setting, on the red carpet of the 2003 Golden Globe Awards. At that glitzy Los Angeles ceremony, Hackman received the Cecil B. DeMille Award for Outstanding Contributions to the World of Entertainment, which was presented to him by Michael Caine and the late Robin Williams. Since his retirement after 2004's Welcome to Mooseport, appearances made by the reclusive Hollywood legend have been few and far between. Hackman was most recently seen chowing down on a chicken sandwich at a San Jose Wendy's in March 2023. He lives with his second wife on their nearby ranch where he's said to partake in painting and writing. The actor enjoyed a storied four-decade career in Hollywood, starring in a diverse array of popular films such as Hoosiers, The Poseidon Adventure, The Royal Tenenbaums, The Birdcage, and in the Superman series as Lex Luthor. He won two Oscars, Best Supporting Actor in 1993 for Unforgiven and Best Actor in 1972 for The French Connection. For the 50th anniversary of the latter, a gritty cop classic directed by William Friedkin, Hackman gave The Post his first interview in a decade. Filmmaking has always been risky, both physically and emotionally, but I do choose to consider that film a moment in a checkered career of hits and misses. He said of the Best Picture Oscar winner Haven seen the film since the first screening in a dark, tiny viewing room in a post-production company's facility 50 years ago, he admitted, Adding that if the film has a legacy, I am not sure what that would be at the time, it seemed to me to be a reverent story of a cop who was simply able to solve and put a stop to a major crime family's attempt to infiltrate the New York drug scene. The film certainly helped me in my career, and I am grateful for that, he said. One of Olivia Rodrigo's backup dancers suffered a major mid-performance wardrobe malfunction during the singer's concert in Montreal. As Rodrigo, 21, sang her hit Love is Embarrassing at the Center Bell on Wednesday, March 27, the dancer's top came undone. In the now viral social media video, the dancer could be seen gripping her pink corset top as the back flung open. She quickly readjusted the straps before resuming choreography, which involved dramatic arm movements. When the song ended, she pointed at her corset around while rolling her eyes. Fans praised the dancer's ability to stay focused amid the fashion emergency. That's a professional. One wrote, as a second social media user added, honestly props to her, she killed the choreo and maintained her privacy of herself full. A third commented, all that and she still gave humor at the end. 
subscribe blast gossip youtube channel for more videos don't miss any update thanks for watching